So if you are in technical sales or in industrial marketing, really all aspects of life, I have a 300 day challenge for you. I had to switch up the flow, show you the way that it go. God is good, but his life is hard. But it gets better when you grind it small. I'm just really trying to leave a mark. We tired of being who they say we are. That's the time we gon' take a fall. I was the real, we don't fake it all. Tired of nine to five. Just make enough to survive. Only living on the weekends. You really thinking that's why I'm alive? So you're probably looking at this like Kyle's got a 300 day challenge. What could this possibly be? And there's no way possible that within 300 days I can make significant improvement to my goal. And I'm here to tell you that 100% you can. Don't believe all of the BS that the rest of the world has told you, whether you can't achieve something because of where you come from, because of your education. We'll start off with a little bit of story. For those of you that don't know my story, I don't have a college degree. I grew up in a middle range, blue collar workhouse, didn't take vacations when I was a kid, didn't have money to buy fancy things. When I was 16, 17 years old, we had one car to share with my family. I don't come from much and I've been able to accomplish what I have in my life, specifically following a plan exactly like this. Now things have changed over the time, but it all starts with your mindset and with goals. And I feel like the world has told you, like if you come from this place, if you don't have these things and you can't achieve it. But if you look at most of the people that have achieved highly successful things, they typically don't come from what they currently have. So they don't come from money. They don't come from Ivy League schools and things like that. A lot of them came and just started everything themselves and worked it up. And that's what I'm here to show you. Does not matter your background, does not matter what you're trying to achieve. You can literally accomplish anything if you follow these specific four steps. Now, I've talked about goals on this, on these episodes in this show before. And some people have been like, dude, I set my goals. I'm working towards them. But this is going to be similar but slightly different. So the first step that we're going to talk about is setting that goal. And, and the premise here is you have to think 300 days out, right? So in 300 days, what is a goal that I want to accomplish? Now, the goal cannot be something small. The goal should make you feel uncomfortable. The goal should, when you say it to people, I want to do this in 300 days. I want to be here. People should say to you, no effing way can you achieve that. You want the naysayers. The goal needs to be not something that's easily attainable because when the going gets tough, you want to be able to say, I'm fighting for that goal. And we just talked about this here internally at Manufacturing Tribe with the team, which is why I felt that this was relevant for today's episode because this does work. So set that goal. I don't care if your goal is you're in sales, you want to achieve, you want to do 5 million in revenue for your company, or if you have a job and you want to be promoted to a certain position in 300 days, set that goal, be ambitious. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't achieve it, but set it to be high, as high as physically possible but still, don't, don't. we're not talking about your three-year goal or your five-year goal. I never set goals that are that far out. I just have goals, and every day I'm working towards those goals. I don't put a time frame limitation on it because when you're doing that, when you're saying, in three years, I want to be here, you're telling the world and the universe that I want that to happen at that time frame, right? And if you're putting that out there, what if it could happen sooner? So just look at 300 days from now, what do you want as a goal for yourself. It could be something in your personal life, could be something related to fitness, could be something related to family. But for the sake of this show, let's talk about it from a career standpoint work. So you salespeople, I want you to think about what is my goal, whether it's revenue, number of deals I close, territory I own, what is my goal 300 days from now? And I want you to write that down right now. Now, if you need some time to think about it, that's fine, but put down on your notes that you want to have a 300 day goal. Now, if you've gone through this before in the past, I'm here to tell you that most likely the goal, unless you, unless you heard it from me or somebody like me, most likely the goal that you set was not big enough. And this is why people fail to achieve it. This is why people don't go through the rest of the steps in the process to get to achieve their goal is because they set it and it's something that is just out, outside of reach that doesn't require them to do too many uncomfortable things and that's why when when you get sick when you have some issues some drama in your personal life 
change of your job scope, whatever it is, you're not going to fight through it and keep pushing because the goal is just outside of comfort. Really, this goal has to make you feel uncomfortable. If you're in sales, your goal should be in the, let's say, 100,000, 150,000, 200. I want to make $200,000 more a year. If you're in marketing, I want to generate this many new results, this many new leads in 300 days. If you own a business, same thing, revenue generation, whatever it is, the goal needs to make you feel uncomfortable. It doesn't matter what your career is. It may mean you want to be the boss. Just yesterday, I said this to my team, all positions at Manufacturing Tribe are open, including my own. And so if somebody wants to be the CEO of this company, set that as a goal and we'll figure out how to get you there. Now, I'm not saying it could happen. That's a, that's a bit ambitious, but it could, not in 300 days, but it could happen in the future and take over my position and let me go and do other things within the company and just be the owner. But everything's on the table. You can literally achieve anything that's possible if you have a strategic goal. So let's go on to the next step. The next step's gonna be you have to plan. And what I mean by plan is you don't want to go into the planning phase of how you're going to accomplish your goal and then start to talk yourself out of that goal. You really need to put emotion behind that goal to where you're like, all right, here's my goal. I can achieve this goal. I know this is gonna be possible. Now I just gotta figure out how to do it. Now that plan has to be somewhat detailed, okay? You can't just be like, it's not simply the law of attraction. It's not simply the visual visualization, which I've talked about before on this show, on multiple videos, about visualizing yourself obtaining goals on a daily basis, having a ritual and things like that. It's not as simple as saying, this is what I want, and if I visualize it and close my eyes and feel myself driving that car, walking into that company, having that position, accomplishing those sales revenue, doing something in marketing, it's not just simply that you need to visualize it and feel it. You need to have the plan in place to be able to execute on it. So when you're developing this plan, don't allow the workload that you're going to have to do to execute that plan to be able to talk you out of how you're going to accomplish it. You need to look at it from a standpoint of these are the milestones that I have to hit in my plan. In order for me to get to my end goal, I have to hit these three or five, three, three to five, three or four milestones throughout that. Like step one, I first have to hit here. Then my next milestone, big marker is going to be here, so on and so forth. Maybe your goal says you just need to hit two milestones in order for you to get there. But you want to break it down and say, for me to get here, here's a couple of key events that have to happen. Once you have that mapped out, then you want to break it down on a granular daily micro level. What are you going to do on a daily basis in order for you to work towards hitting that goal? And this is where people will say, all right, I'm going to set this goal. I've got my milestone set. This is what I need to do on a daily basis. And then usually they fall off because they're not doing the rest of the steps of the process. But really map it out. If it's something where you need to talk to your boss, management, ownership, whatever, sit down with them and say, this is my goal and this is what we're going to do internally. Everybody here has to create their own goals that are employees here. And then they have to sit down with me and we're going to develop the plan of what are the milestones for you to get there. And then what do you have to do on a daily basis for you to work towards that goal? And that's really as simple as it is. Now, the hard part comes into figuring out how to achieve that. Like, what do you need to do every single day? What are the three things that you need to do every single day? And maybe it's not something that's in your daily work hours, your, your nine to five or, or whatever your work hours are. Maybe it's something that you have to do outside of that. Maybe it's something you have to read, a mindset you have to change something literal that you have to do. Maybe it's if you're in sales, because a lot of this audience is salespeople, it could be something like, in order for me to hit my goal, I have to make 100 phone calls a day. That's what I have to do every single day. I know that that is part of my plan. And so if you don't hit that every single day, if you don't execute the plan every single day, then you're not going to reach the goal. And it simply comes down to, there's 24 hours in a day. And if you're trying to hit a massive goal in 300 days, and you're not executing every single day, then you're just not going to be able to reach it from a time standpoint. Time keeps moving. The world keeps turning. If you don't feel like doing something today, the world moves on. And the only person that's losing in it is you. Because you can either have time work against you, or you can have time work for you. So if you're not executing every single day to the plan, then there's no way that you're going to be able to realistically achieve this goal or significantly make 
progress towards achieving that goal. I'm not saying that if you do this, you will hit that goal in 300 days. But at the end of these 300 days, if you do these steps, you will be significantly further towards that goal than if you did not do this process. So you have to plan. You have to make sure that whoever in your company that you work for, the ownership, whatever, knows the plan. Everybody's on board with the plan. Then we get into the next step, which is going to be to execute the plan. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the difference between those that are extremely successful in generating and accomplishing their goals and those that aren't are the ones that don't execute when the going gets tough. If you're trying to do a workout routine, you're like, I don't feel like it. I'm going to do it tomorrow. If you're trying to do a sales activity and says, I don't really feel like making phone calls today. I don't really feel like doing these cold visits. I don't feel like sending out all these emails. Every single time that you don't feel like it and every single time that you don't do it, you're allowing time to work against you. You will never accomplish even close to that goal that you have. The execution comes into where you have to do it on a daily basis. Every single day that you don't do it and you can put a, a W in the column of that day on your calendar and say, did I win this day with hitting my execution of the plan that I made to, towards the goal that I'm trying to accomplish? Did I win that day? Am I moving closer or further away to it? You really have to be honest with yourself to be able to say, you know what, today I didn't feel like it. I didn't do the activity that I was supposed to do. I know that that's going to hurt me, but tomorrow I'm going to do it. That's fine. You're not going to win every single day. You're not going to accomplish your entire task of things that you want to do every single day because life happens. But if the majority of the time, 80, 90, 95% of the time, you are executing that plan, you will be significantly further than where you're at. And you just need to break it down into micro small steps. This is my goal. This is my plan to accomplish it. What am I going to do on a daily basis? I need to do these three things. I know for a fact that if I do these three things, I will work towards my goal and I will be able to make significant improvement. And it's that simple. The last step is going to be be honest with yourself and measure your results and reflect on the accomplishments that you've made. And this is where it's not just measure the results, not just grading yourself against, did I do this every day? You have to reflect on it and give yourself the credit to the wins that you have. Like if you did it for seven days in a row, for six days in a row, you need to show yourself some credit and say, I accomplished something here and I'm proud of myself for that. Pat yourself on the back, right? Because not many people are going to do it for you. So you have to reflect and say, in all honesty, did I accomplish what I was trying to set out for on a daily basis this week. You can look at it on a weekly basis and just say, how many days did I work towards it? If you want to do the five days a week, that's fine. But really, you should be looking at seven. The weekends, you know, the weekends are for time to relax and recharge your batteries, but there's no reason that you can't be doing something towards working towards that goal on the weekend, whether it's educating yourself, learning something new, listening to podcasts, whatever it is, reading books, you can do that in your spare time. If you really are looking to accomplish that goal, you have to look at it from seven days a week and just look at the week and, and reflect and say, did I have some wins? Did I have some losses? And then look at it and say, is there an adjustment that I have to make in my plan to be able to reach my goal? Do you know how many plans that I've made and strategies that I've had that didn't work over the last seven years that, that I started this company? Dozens. It would shock you how many times I have failed in saying, this is going to work. We're going to do this now. This is going to be it, and it doesn't work. But the difference between those that succeed and those that fail are the ones that make micro strategy adjustments as they see this is not working. We have to adjust and pivot and then make a change to the plan and make a change to what we're executing on a daily basis. And that's really what it comes down to is if you don't measure your results, measure your activity, make sure that you're going down the right path. And don't go into it from the standpoint of, I know I need to do this much activity, I know I really don't want to do it, and then start to adjust your measurement or reflection to, I knew that wouldn't work, and go into it as a naysayer. You have to go into this thing and say, I'm going to give it 150%, and then measure, am I working closer or further away from that goal based on what I just did this week, what I just did this past two or three weeks, and look at it from a monthly standpoint. Now, as long as you're executing the plan and the plan works, you will get there. But if you don't make adjustments, you're going to have to make adjustments. If you don't, then when you're going to come up from those 300 days and be like, dude, 
Kyle was wrong. I did not achieve my goal. I didn't even get close. That's because most likely your plan was broken. You thought if I do this, then I'm going to be able to reach it. But you didn't see all the steps along the way where it's telling you this isn't working, this isn't working. From a sales team standpoint, when we set goals of calls, you have to make this many calls a day, a week, whatever. You have to do this much activity on social, this many emails. Then we want to look at the results. Is the activity producing the outcome that we expected? I, I have to look at it from the standpoint of, is it producing the results that I want? So are there deals being created? Do I have more discovery calls? Do I have more demos? Am I generating more revenue? So if you say, this is my input, the output is this many deals. What's the source of those deals? Well, these activities generated these deals. Then take it a step further. How many of those deals closed and what was the source of those deals, right? Well, if in the end, you look at 10 deals that have closed over the last 60 days and the source was one of three and you're not paying as much attention to the one that's closing and generating the most deals, then you have to make a micro adjustment and say, I want to push more effort and more activity into that source of generating revenue. It's so simple. Most of the time people say, this is the plan, I'm gonna do this, and seven days and they stop, or three days and they stop. For the people that do complete the plan and do put in the effort for 300 days straight, or when they're doing New Year's resolution, and say I'm gonna do this every day for a year, whatever it is, they don't make adjustments, therefore their performance lacks, they don't reach their results, they start to doubt themselves and they say this isn't gonna work. But you have to put in the effort, Look back, measure, reflect, give yourself the pat on the back, make adjustments every single time, make micro adjustments. We're constantly making changes here. Every single day, we're making micro adjustments to everything because that's the way you stay relevant and that's the way you continue to perform. So for you sales managers out there, ownership leaders, department leaders that have a team, you need to hold your team accountable and just show them the data. If the data shows that what you're telling them to do is working, that doesn't mean you just say, that's what we're doing for the next six months. You say, that's what we're doing for right now. For the next 30 days, this is the plan. We're going to measure the results on a weekly basis, measure the results on a monthly basis. Once that's done, take that data, make micro adjustments to your strategy to improve the performance for the next month. And then again, test it. Something could change in two months, three months, four months. Something could change that is going to hinder your result. But if you're just doing the same thing, then you're not going to accomplish great things. So we'll be back live tomorrow, Thursday, for a talk shop episode. Next week, we'll be back. On Monday, we might be doing the Ask Kyle show live from a different location to be determined. And then Wednesday show, we'll be back with our normal program. So guys, as always, connect with me on LinkedIn. As long as you're not going to try and sell me some shit that I don't need, go to the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, go over to the podcast, Subscribe to that as well if you want to listen to this while you're driving, and we will see you on the next one.